it weighs heavily sometimes on me. I think maybe being a freelancer is both a blessing and a curse. Welcome to another episode of Chewing the Fat. I am your host, Big Rob. Thank you so much for downloading the episode and tuning in. I really appreciate that. Season two, getting off to a good start. A lot of good response. Thank you for sticking with the podcast and showing me the love. I really, really do appreciate that. I'm excited to have a guest in studio with me today. We've known each other for... uh, Probably a few years working in the local film community. Please welcome Nick Laws. Hey, hey. Hey, Nick. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I didn't know that it would actually be fat that I could chew, and I appreciate that. I yeah. Should. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, I see, know when, you, when you come into the studio, that's one of the bonus perks. Like, if, if you're on Zoom, you don't get the fat. Yeah. Chew, so. I wouldn't have eaten dinner if I'd known. Yeah. Well, you know. And it, you know, it's hard to get that, you know, down from Alaska. I mean, whale blubber. It's really, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's a delicacy. Yeah, you could taste it, though. It's, it's, it's different. Yeah. It was high-quality stuff. I mean, <laughs> I think the refrigeration on the truck went out, but, I mean, it's high, still high-quality <laughs> yeah, yeah. stuff. Um, Nick, uh, we've known each other, like I said, a few years uh, working in the local film community. Probably uh, Wages of Sin would probably be yeah. where we first were, where I was first introduced to you. Mm-hmm. Um and you have just, I mean, well, not, not just you, but the film community here in Augusta has really blown up, really mm-hmm. blown up and taken off. Uh, and, and I love to see it as an, as an actor, uh, as someone who loves uh, being a part of those type of things. Uh, it's really cool to see production. As a matter of fact, I told you, I saw you, saw you downtown yesterday. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, filming something so it's mm-hmm. so cool to have that vibe in into uh, augusta um what is what is your thoughts behind that i mean is, is you know i mean it was it's is film uh and uh, you're, a, you're a sound guy let me mm-hmm. that you're a sound guy you have many other talents but sound guy nick <laughs> is the registered trademark right um uh, you know is that something you've always pursued from when you were little no not at all no no i I kind of always say I wish I had kind of been where I'm at now, you know, when I was 20 and I'd mm-hmm. probably be a millionaire by now, but, um, but that's okay. Um, but no, I, uh, I started out kind of, I went to school for business management mm. and then I worked my way up into a business management position and I realized how terrible that was. Yeah. Um, and, um, went to work for, um, you know, a local production company here, uh, doing kind of just about everything, editing, videography. Um, and, uh, and that was fun. And then I went to work, uh, for a TV station mm-hmm. and did a, did a little stint there. And then I worked for another production company. And then in 2017, I went full-time freelance. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of when I, I, I kind of said, you know, if I'm really going to make it, um, I need to focus on audio. So I've, I, I, that's when I kind of really, I invested heavily into my sound equipment and mm-hmm. started doing sound for, you know, local production companies and, um, uh, film and TV that comes in the area. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but on kind of on the same token, I was doing videography, have been doing videography, still do videography. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's sort of a dual profession, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I have, soundguynick.com and also have nicklawsvideography.com okay um which is a bit odd uh, but it keeps me uh you know out of the poorhouse <laughs> right, well that's i mean that's the goal right at bare minimum yeah stay out of the poorhouse exactly, exactly um nick are you uh native to augusta i was born in uh, raleigh north carolina okay. uh, but i moved here when i was 11 so i've been here uh almost 30 years and okay. um yeah i like augusta uh mostly because i am Pretty much the only sound guy here. Right. Well, you know, big fish, little <laughs> pond type of thing, right? It, it really is. It really is. Um, I applaud you for, for seeing what you wanted to do, niching down, niching down, niching down, whatever. You know what I mean? You know, you, yeah. Uh, focusing. There you go. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I'm still kind of still kind of trying to do that. And, um, you know, I've – when people ask me, well, what kind of stuff do you shoot? You know, I've done – literally everything from mm-hmm. birth announcements to funerals yeah, um, and just about everything in between. And um, I like 
all of it really, mm-hmm. but at a certain point, yeah, it, you know, you don't want to become that, you know, it's the, the master of none thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, what is it? The <laughs> Jack of all trades master yeah. of none. Yeah. Um, which is kind of where I'm at, but I'm, I'm, I, I, I figure if I can focus on sound, then, uh, when these, you know, big movies come to Augusta or, you know, big, uh, you know, ad campaigns and that sort of thing, mm-hmm. I'm at the top of the list for them to call or at least close to the top, mm-hmm. which is, seems to be the case. I mean, we did, um, I was a sound mixer on three movies last year mm-hmm. here and they're all here in Augusta. Uh, and then I was the boom operator on one before that, right before the pandemic hit. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's been really great. And that seems to be where I want to be and I want to be it here in Augusta. Okay. And so, uh, a lot of what I've done both, you know, with the Southeastern filmmakers and also, um, on the film Augusta advisory panel mm-hmm. has just been to help, you know, bring business here and promote business, uh, you know, film business happening here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, because Augusta is a great location, um, mm-hmm. for, I mean, because we have rivers, we have uh, sandy areas that could be deserty. We, you know, plains or whatever, you mm-hmm. know, flatlands. We've got pine trees. We've got we've got a little bit of everything. Yeah. And if nothing else, as far as like a hub, Augusta is near two hours from everywhere. Right. You know, I mean, if you want the Atlantic Ocean, we're a couple hours from mm-hmm. that. If you yeah. want the Appalachian Mountains, we're a couple hours from that. Um, but you you can double a lot of those type of locations right here. I remember, um, I'll have to look up the the release date. You may remember it. Um, one of the first movies I remember being shot in Augusta was that darn cat <laughs> down at the Lamar building. They used it as like an FBI headquarters or whatever. Mm-hmm. That was the remake of the original Disney movie, that darn cat. And it was a Disney remake. Uh, and I thought that was, I think that must've been like 92, 93, somewhere in the early 90s. I was like, that is the coolest thing. Why isn't there more of that type of stuff? Because again, as um, someone who does theater and enjoys acting and that type of stuff is like, how, how come I'm not part of this? How come, which it's a whole other struggle being on the acting end of things uh, as far as, you know, at least they're calling you. <laughs> <laughs> the, the audition process for you seems nil so that's good yeah it's that's, like oh you have gear cool, cool. Uh, here's when to show up <laughs> that's all here's the call sheet be here that's awesome um so, but yes just to just to have that type of vibe to have people that are coming into town that are bringing experiences from other areas doing larger films or, or whatever i just and bringing opportunities too yeah i guess it really is a great place you know we're we kind of jokingly say we want to get all those B movies from Atlanta and, you know, any, when we get the, the leftovers from Atlanta. Um, and I think that there, that that's true. I mean, we really do want to get whatever we can get. Mm-hmm. Um, and not only, you know, the big prestige Marvel movies, but you know, your, uh, you know, $500,000 budget, you know, uh, thriller, we'll take that too. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the stuff that I've heard is, Oh, you know, we have all the stuff that Atlanta has, except we, you know, it's 20 minutes to anywhere in town. You know, there's no, there's no yeah. traffic and the people here, like myself, we really want to work and we are enthused about working. Some of us are a little bit greener than others, but it also means that we're not jaded. Like, you know, a lot of the professionals in, you know, in, in Hollywood and Atlanta, New York, mm-hmm. um, and we really genuinely want to, you know, make films, you know, yeah. And, and I think that's it that, you know, from, from doing work with, uh, the wages of sin guys and, mm-hmm. and local, um, you know, local indies that are making movies, making the B movies or whatever. Um, it is, it is 100% passion project. Yes. Everybody wants to get paid. Yes. Of course we would all like to get paid for stuff, but there's so much passion and heart behind everything that everybody does. Mm-hmm. There's such I think good intention behind what they're wanting this town to possibly be. Yeah. Um, you know, I've, I've got a lot of opinions on some of the things that, uh, you know, the city as a whole could do better. Uh, I'm sure you do too, as far as like being attractive to films and using what we have to again, promote, um, Augusta for film work. Um, 
Is there is there a major single hurdle you think for getting more of that work here, uh, or is it something that will be solved with time? Well, I think it is kind of a matter of time. Um, I know that Film Augusta in Columbia County has its own film bureau, but um, I I think that what they're doing is focusing on uh, the tools that they have that. When location managers are looking for that specific location, they're going to, you know, they're going to film Augusta will have what they need to send out. Uh, Oh, you need a baseball stadium. Here's our options. Mm -hmm. Uh, And we have several, you know, you want little league, you want, you know, uh, the old Lake Olmstead where we shot the hill, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think things like that, having access to those locations and like, and being able to send out, uh, like a, here's a photo of uh, you know all these locations that you're looking for. Yeah. We have that here in Augusta. That's very important. Um, so yeah, ultimately, you know, it's just a matter of time until you know um, the word kind of spreads that hey, here's they have all this stuff in Augusta. You want old, you know, '60s vibe. You know, old small town vibe. We can do that. You want big city. We can kind of do that too. You know, mm-hmm. and everything in between. You know, I think all. The other thing that we need is um, a big soundstage. Yes. And that is something that I think is in the works, but it's it's going to be a while um, and it's going to take a lot of money and, mm-hmm. you know, probably a lot of people to, to kind of make that happen. But I think that would really seal the deal, you know, so we get those on location shoots, but then we also can, you can build out a set right. or two. Um, and we have places like Indie Grip, you know, that has a pretty small sound stage and that's great. Uh, and they're a great resource. Um, mm-hmm. but we could always use more and bigger, you know? Yeah. I, this was, this was my, like, who do I need to talk to, uh, idea about that. Uh, when we look at the Regency mall, I was like, this would be a perfect place for a sound stage. Mm-hmm. It's already re- surrounded by a moat. <laughs> so you, can put, yeah, right. you can put guard gates there. Um, and it's definitely big enough. It's big enough for you to have major sound stage, stage in area in there. But also you could have smaller, you know, rental spaces for people to do audio sweetening or, or you know, looping or music. Or, I mean, you could have a whole, uh, you know, orchestral, you know, studio there. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a there's a back lot with a with a movie theater on it. You know what I mean? It's like there there's where you can you know screen. There was all this potential there, and it just seems like um, there's not. Uh, and again, I'm not knowing how much you know the people who own the property want and this that and the other. I was like, it just seemed like such a wasted opportunity because that's that's a place that was almost like a, a blight on the town because it's just an eyesore. And something that could be turned into something really that we could shine. And it's right there by the airport. Yeah. You know, of course, right there by the sewage plant, too. But that's our problem always, you know. Right. Um, well, that's Augusta. Yeah. Welcome to the smell of Augusta. <laughs> uh, you know, one of my thoughts was on that is that if we could, and and the um, Augusta Tech now has classes in mm-hmm. filmmaking, correct? Yeah. 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 Uh, partnered with um, the Georgia Film Institute. What's the name of the? Yes. Yes. Okay. We're going to go with that. <laughs> um, th- th- they're out of they're out of like Atlanta, they, right? You know, um, with proper teaching people mm-hmm. these classes. It's not just like some guy. It's not like yeah, you walking that's, in there. That's that stuff is kind of the more hands on. Like here's a C stand. Here's how you put a light up so you don't mm-hmm. hurt anybody. Um, and then I guess the university has uh, their classes that are kind of more on the, you know, um, the, I hate to say the, intellectual side. Well, the visual, the, the, the art, artistic, the visual, yeah. the, the conceptual, the, those. Right. Yeah. Things. Writing and directing and, mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, so, so we're getting there and, you know, a, a lot of um, kind of the struggle has been what we call crew depth, you know, having, right. do you have, People who can, do you have a, uh, you know, do you have a sound guy? Does he have a boom op? Do you have a sound utility? And then that's just one department. Do you have an art department? Do you have somebody, you know, that could do production design? Do you have carpenters? Do you have, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, set dressers? Whatever you need. Do you have the hair and makeup? And there's just, you know, costumes, so many uh, different departments. And then uh, 
so maybe you have enough to do one movie, but could you handle two at the same time? time, Right. Yeah. 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 And the answer is no, probably not. Mm -hmm. But, um, I think what ultimately, you know, what kind of gets tossed around as a good solution, um, for everything might be is if like HBO or Disney plus or somebody says, we want to do a series, uh, you know, 10 plus episodes of a TV show and we want to shoot it in Augusta because we're, you know, for whatever reason, we're tired of Atlanta Mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, Augusta has that feel, that vibe that we're going for. Uh, maybe they would be willing to, you know, invest or someone would invest then in like studio space or, uh, on, you know, on the crew side, it could be people like me, uh, that would be employed more steadily Mm -hmm. or people who maybe have that day job, but haven't really had the reason to quit it yet. Yeah, for sure. And this, you know, if, if you said, Hey, I've got four months, six months, eight months of work. Uh, well, that's a good reason for a lot of people to, to jump in, dive in head first. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And I think what, again, what would be cool is if there was a way, you know, even if it was, even if it was the, the city was in, involved somehow for like the, the, the crew side of things from the Augusta tech, like learning stuff to subsidize some of that cost for those classes so that if, if you have people that maybe they're they're down on the like they're hard they're they're trying to come back and it's like it's like hey we have this opportunity for you to go take this class to learn a life skill a marketable mm-hmm. life skill uh, we're going to pay for your classes but understand that uh, and and we will work with you know the the film office or whatever to to get you on crew or mm-hmm. whatever but understand that when you when you do get crewed you, you know we get ten percent of your you know first years checks or whatever to pay back Mm -hmm. the, the investment that was made into them for learning. And now they, you know, now they have something that, that they could be proud of that they can, you know, uh, survive on. And it's not that much of a, uh, an investment for the city to invest in people. And then they're going to get it back on the backside too. You know, Uh, I don't know. They're, I mean, as I speak, all of those things, I just, there's mountains (laughs) of red tape. I understand, but yeah. That just seems like the altruistic way to for Augusta be, to become like that. So, because then you not only have the locations, like you said, you then have the crew. You've got crew depth. You've got hey, we have a class coming out every you know it's a six month class or whatever. We have a class mm-hmm. coming out six month that's twenty new people, and and you're going to have people that are going to be familiar with, uh, you know, lighting, uh, you know, set to, set construction, mm-hmm. you know, you know, understand what a gaffer is. <laughs> you know, what's an Apple box, you know, those type of things. So that they're not, you know, just green new on set yeah, um, yeah. and are able to, instead of having to be like, Oh man, we've got this guy, we, you know, they've got some experience. Yeah. And that's huge. Belt. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, I just think that that's, it's there. The opportunity is there, but like you said, somebody has got to invest in it. Somebody has got to yeah. say, sign off on, yeah, this is what we need to do. Yeah. And there's people that, you know, in our community that are really, you know, putting their money where their mouth is. And, and so I don't want to, you know, uh, say that, that no one is doing anything for film and I guess because a lot of people are, yeah. um, but it, it, you know, like you said, there's a lot of red tape and there are, it just takes time for, um, for things to kind of evolve and to happen. And I think we'll get there and we, you know, we are getting there. I mean, like I said, um, you know, movies are starting to come out. Like we had Tulsa last year that, that came out, was shot like 90% in Augusta, maybe 100% in Augusta. And, um, you know, that was a, a, a really good movie. It wasn't a huge, you know, blockbuster, but I mean, it's out there and you can see it. And, um, and I'm really, you know, I didn't work on that one, but I'm really proud of it, you know, for the people that did. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my buddy Denton was a DP on that one. Yeah. And, um, Didn't that get some- yeah, he's, he's terrific. And so I'm, I'm really, you know, proud to, to point to that as an example of like, this is what could be, and we could right. be doing five, six, eight of these a year, yeah. you know, and keeping everybody employed would be great. Yeah. And, in, and I know we, we had, uh, what was the Eastwood movie, the mule? Uh, I don't mm-hmm. know what the percentage was on what was shot here, what wasn't, but I know, I know there were a lot of friends that did background work in that film, yeah. you know, yeah. um, you know, we had the Mel Gibson film come, 
Was yeah, about six months ago or so, they were filming. Ag- or, Agent Game was yeah. was it was early uh, last year. Yeah, yeah, I was the sound mixer on that one. That was my first um, first feature as a sound mixer, uh, and uh, so imagine you know getting that call, and mm-hmm. then I you know showed up and uh, with the, with the line producer <laughs> and you uh, grabbed the boom to like start, and you're like, oh no, no. <laughs> he was like. Yeah, we want to uh, we want to hire you for this movie. Oh, and by the way, uh, the first two days we get Mel Gibson. Uh, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is, yeah. a, this is a legit movie then. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I better buy some more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> At least more mic tape. At least more mic yes. tape. You can never have enough not mic tape. Yes, um, that is so cool. Yeah, <laughs> and 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 like you see, when you start thinking about the things that have been here and more coming. Mm-hmm. And and whether it be commercial work um, or film, yes, I think, you know, everybody wants to see the film because that's the, you know, that's the big golden shiny thing. But mm-hmm. if you can get commercial work, that could pay all the bills yeah. for, for the films to come, you know? Yeah, that that's the thing. Is commercials and those single or two-day or three-day jobs typically pay more. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you could make... Uh, Seven hundred dollars a day you know, mm-hmm. versus two hundred dollars a day on a you know on a film. I mean, obviously you're doing more days, but uh, it's the same work. It's typically the same you know twelve hour day. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll take that any day of the week. <laughs> right, right. Do you have a Do you have a favorite uh, production that you've been a part of? Like- well, yeah, uh, hands down, my favorite has been uh, the movie Applewood, which uh, we shot over the summer and um that one was an all local production every mm-hmm. every bit of it was uh was local down in down to uh the talent mm-hmm. you know starred kate daly a uh, local actress mm-hmm. and she was fantastic um susan willis yeah. local actor nathan uh nathan what's his last name <laughs> raul R- roth Rothwell, what's his last name? I don't. Anyway, know. he's really good. Yeah. He's local, uh, and uh, he was in the movie. Uh, we shot it, you know, all here in Augusta for a, a very low budget, but I think it was just so much fun because, like, these are all my friends. Like, these are all the people that I know, and if you know, it's a dream crew to be able to work with them every day. And it, you know, ultimately, if I could do that uh, every day, mm-hmm. I'd be so happy. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, my you. Know, I've done a lot of commercial work, um, but being able to, you know, be on set, uh, and, and in knowing the crew, knowing the, you know, whoever your, your co-stars are, whoever you're acting against or with, it's, it's, it is probably one of the best feelings in the world because you're, you are, even if it's a commercial Mm -hmm. and it's goofy, you're creating a little bit of art. You're, you're taking some creativity and putting it out into the world. And, um, yeah, I just love to see more of that happening here. Love to see me and more of that. But you know, <laughs> again, contact me. You know? <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, so what's the what's the premise of Applewood then? So Applewood is. Uh, are you uh, able to talk about this stuff? I mean, so, yeah, so actually, it- Applewood should be coming out um, pretty soon. I think, mm-hmm. although I don't know how it will be released or distributed. Okay. Um, that was a uh, Amy Bailey production, right? Yeah. I don't remember the name of her production company, but I know. Yeah. Um, beyond casual media. Well, there you go. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, Applewood started out, we had, uh, you know, my buddy Denton Atkinson, DP. He had been working uh, alongside the director, Rob Hollux, who's kind of the only one that wasn't local. But Rob um, had a lot of uh, ideas and he had a lot of connections and he wanted to uh, direct a feature. He had kind of a, a budget in place, but couldn't nail down that lead actor, that you know household name, mm-hmm. because he had not directed a feature. Okay. Uh, you know, it's sort of like you have to be able to show that you are competent and can you know deliver a product. And so Denton said, "Well, let's just make a movie, and then you can say you made a movie, right?" <laughs> and so. Uh, it was going to be very, very, you know, small budget, um, but it was 
And it was based on an idea that Denton had um, about, you know, this like uh, psychic phenomenon where you touch an object and you can kind of see into its past. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a name for it. I forget. But um, so he kind of had that idea, um, you know, and he brought Amy on board and then she, um, you know, blew things up. <laughs> you know, budget wise, but also uh, production wise and brought on a lot of resources and things that we really needed and um, turned it into like a legit movie. And, um, and it, I, I haven't seen it yet, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm super excited. I think it's going to be fantastic. And I think it's already doing what we intended it to do, which is now Rob Hollicks has that, to show for himself Mm -hmm. and he can say, this is what I can do with this budget. Imagine what I could do with 10 times that. Right. Um, Or he can take that to, you know, leading Hollywood actors and say, watch this. If you want to see, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, that I know what I'm doing. And uh, yeah. And I think that's, that's happening. I really do. Is uh, the post happening in Augusta locally? Is it being actually post has been happening in, uh, in the UK. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. which is where Rob is based. And gotcha. okay. uh, I know that I, I haven't seen a lot, but I saw Amy post about, you know, recording a live symphony mm-hmm. for the score, which wow. I'm very excited about. Cause that's, that's not a, a low budget movie no, thing. <laughs> no, not recording a live symphony. Yeah. And uh, I know that they were doing, you know, color grading and all that. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's deep into post right now. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, is there a passion project that you have that you would love to see, or is, is there some, something that you, I mean, cause you think like so you, you, you kind of have, uh, knowledge and experience, and everything. If you ha- do you have like a blockbuster you've written? Do you, ha- or are you, <laughs> are you, a, do you have a short or something like that, that you'd like to, um, put a dream team together and shoot? Yeah, actually, I've been meaning to talk to you. Do you do you have a million dollars or so that I can just have? That would be great. I mean, <laughs> like not in these pants, but right. <laughs> right. Me neither. <laughs> now I, um, it's pretty cliche, but, uh, I really want to direct. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, every time I do a movie, I think, um, I could do that. Maybe not better, but I could do it differently. Mm-hmm. Or here's how, here's what I learned from this experience. And here's what I can take into that. Uh, any chance that I get, you know, recently I had a chance with, um, our friend and your friend, former guest Jay Starks. Yes. Um, he came to me and said, will you direct this short film that, you know, I'm, I'm producing and acting in. And, and so that was a great opportunity for me uh, to kind of get to direct something that I didn't write. Mm-hmm. Most of the stuff that I've done, like with wages of sin, um, I've been the writer kind of just out of necessity, which right. is probably the worst part of it because, you know, I love her, but my wife says, maybe don't write. Maybe you should just, you know, stick to the camera and sound stuff. And, and she's not wrong. Right. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I think ultimately uh, I would love, I would love to direct a feature and um, it'll happen someday, yeah. you know, whether it's, uh, you know, for, um, you know, no money at all. And I'm just pulling favors, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, if I get somebody on board that maybe, you know, has the idea and they just need somebody to kind of, you know, make it happen. But, yeah. um, but yeah, that's ultimately what I think I'm kind of leaning towards. And, you know, all of my career choices up to now really have been kind of, I, I, I've been pushed and prodded in those directions. You know, when, even when I started out, um, uh, doing video work. I I was working for a company that processes Medicare claims Mm. and um, I worked my way up into a, what I supposed to be a management position and, but they couldn't call me a manager because of, you know, corporate bullshit really. Um, (laughs) And so, uh, but what, so I was a supervisor over two people and um, I had a lot of time on my hands and I didn't have, we didn't have full internet access, but I had access to lynda.com, which mm. I think now is, is something different, but it was just online tutorials of, you know, software, mostly, mm-hmm. uh, premiere pro after effects, Photoshop. Yeah. I learned them all. And, um, that's kind of, you know, how I, you know, was able to start doing things and start, you know, getting into those production jobs. And, um, 
<clears throat> now, you know, and then from there, I kind of got pushed into, oh, uh, now I'm shooting weddings. Uh, now, the more, you know, now I'm doing live streams. Right. Uh, now I'm a sound guy. And like mm-hmm. uh, being kind of pushed uh, and not pushed in a bad way, but kind of uh, it's come along when I needed it to. Mm-hmm. I've never really, you know, like I said, if I had started out when I was 20 years old and said, I'm going to be a director, then I think, you know, my path would have been a lot different. Right. But I also like how it has come on, come along organically. And, mm-hmm. and so now I'm, I'm putting that out there, the director thing, you know, so that I'll have it in the back of my head and that it will kind of subtly influence my, my path going forward. And, you know, if it, if it's this year, great. If it's 10 years from now, also great. Right. You know, uh, but I, I think, I think it will happen. Yeah. And I think that's the, the great thing about having a community um, where the, the opportunity is there. I mean, yes, there's a lot to be said for creating your own opportunity. You know, mm-hmm. if you have an idea and you, you want to do something, like I said, you either you're calling on love equity to get your friends to help you do it. Um, you know, start a, start a Kickstarter or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Dwayne Brown. <laughs> Kentucky Goblins free. Uh, is that coming out? Oh my goodness! It is. It's, it's supposed to be out May thirteenth. Well, there you go. What? I think I heard that on your podcast. I know, right? Uh, but uh, you know, but to have that opportunity, or if you you know you do find that in, investment angel to mm-hmm. to to really believe in what your idea is and your passion. Um, but being able to have that support, like I said, of of a community like. Um, the uh, Southeastern filmmakers, mm-hmm. uh, wages sent. I always talk about wages sent because, like, you know, yeah. Dan and Stephen, they will like support anybody for right. anything. They are, they really embody the spirit of independent are, cinema for sure. They really are DTF down to film. I mean, <laughs> really. Um, um, you talked about your wife. She's supportive of your uh, creative endeavors, and I understand mm-hmm. a lot of these creative endeavors are paying bills now, which is right. which is great. But prior to the paying bill part of it. <laughs> She does, uh, yeah, a lot of times it's like, is that a paid gig? <laughs> you know, sort yeah. of questions, and which I understand. Um, she's been supremely supportive. Um, and, you know, that's kind of the two, the two things that I could give to any new up-and-coming filmmakers. Uh, the first is, well, you should always say what you want. Just put it out there because that's – that's how it happens. Mm-hmm. You come to something like the Southeastern filmmakers, you say, I want to be an editor. And next thing you know, someone's calling you to edit. That's just how it happens. It's just putting it out there and, and, and being open to opportunities that come to you. The second thing is to marry into somebody that has health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I've been, I've been lucky uh, enough to do that, to do both, both really. Of those yeah. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, she, I think she really is, you know, cause she gets enthused, you know, she, I tell her, Hey, uh, you know, I'm working with Mel Gibson or, you know, um, I, we were very excited. I was very excited actually more than Mel Gibson for, um, this guy named Barkhad Abdi, who was, uh, if you watch Captain Phillips, he's the one that goes, look at me. I'm oh, the captain now. Yeah. We had that guy in Augusta for two days. Wow. We shot with him. And, uh, <laughs> so it's these little things, you know, obviously that's, uh, you know, he had a small part, but I, I, I just love being able to say that, Hey, I work with that guy. Yeah. And, uh, I, I met that guy, you know, but, uh, she's, she kind of, you know, is living the Hollywood dream with me and, That's um, and, yeah, super supportive and, uh, both, you know, financially and <laughs> emotionally. That's great. Yeah. And it, cause it, it, filmmaking is tough in that, and it, it really makes no sense, but you know, we work 12 hour days. I'm not, quite sure how that got started, but that's just how it is. And, um, I, it's probably my least favorite part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm sure that there are a lot of reasons for it, but man, I mean, why can't we shoot eight hour days? 10 hour days would be great. Well, I mean, I know there's a, there was a lot of like reform that was supposed to be happening in the film industry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I granted, I know a lot of that's based on union houses, mm-hmm. which, Georgia, South Carolina, they're right to work states. So yeah, that, that doesn't really play here. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's kind of another thing where, you know, I feel like if I 
had the opportunity to make my own film, then maybe I would get to make those rules, you know, and I would get to say, Hey, you know, we're shooting 8 AM to 6 PM. And, and after that, that's your own time. Um, it's also the reason why, you know, I, I try and strike a balance with her. I've not really, um, I'm not really seeking out a lot of work in Atlanta, for instance, mm-hmm. I don't want to be gone. I don't, I'll do a, a day job, you know, uh, I do that f- quite often, but, um, I don't want to go and take a feature in Atlanta or be a boom op in Atlanta and be away from her all week or for, you know, many weeks at a time right. if I can help it. Um, I, you know, I might be in that role in, in the future. You know, there, there may be some opportunities that, you know, are, are worth, you know, kind of venturing down that road, but, mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I have to try and keep that balance of, you know, the, the, the films that I've done, at least at the end of the night, I come home to her yeah. and on the weekends, you know, it's, it's us and we don't have any kids. Uh, so, you know, she's my best friend, you know, and she's the one I really want to spend time with. So yeah. that's kind of, uh, been my thing is, is trying to keep that work life balance. That kind of often means, uh being married to movie making and also mm-hmm. married to her. That's awesome. Plus you guys have that sweet cabin up in the, up in, uh, outside of Gallenberg too. We so, do. We I do. Mean, yeah. <laughs> that that's, that's on my, that I've spoken that into existence yeah. for myself. At some point I will have a, a cabin in the woods. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah, we have a, a little place in, in Sevierville, the hometown of Dolly Parton. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's called Barry in love. Because everything up there has to be a, a bear pun. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it has been great. So when we get the chance, we, we go up there and spend some time. Otherwise, it's an, sort of an investment property. And, and uh, it's been great for us. Yeah, we love it. All right, Nick. This is the part of the show where we do dive a little bit deeper. Uh, and uh, everybody goes through dark days. You know, we talk about these good highs, you know, from working with Mel Gibson and, you know, these type of things. Um, but everybody has down days and days of doubt. Um, how do you keep the darkness at bay? Well, you know, a lot of, a lot of the time I'm so tied to my work that, you know, it, it it, sometimes it it feels like I'm physically impacted by my work. And there's a lot of times where, uh, my, my body is telling me, Hey, you need to take, to take a day off, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and it also, it weighs heavily sometimes on me. I think maybe being a freelancer is both a blessing and a curse. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, obviously I love being my own boss. I love kind of to a certain extent being able to set my own schedule um, being able to accept or reject jobs as needed. But, uh, at the same time, you know, like, like January, for instance, there was not a lot on my calendar, you know, and I was riding that high of working 12, you know, 12 hours, 60 hour plus weeks on uh, a movie called the Hill Mm -hmm. that wrapped right at Christmas. And then nothing. You know, and, and just seeing that empty calendar, it, um, uh, it affects me, you know, and, and that seems to be what causes me the most issues, you know? So, you know, if I had that day, day job, that nine to five, obviously that wouldn't be an issue. But when I did have that day, that day job, I had kind of the opposite problem. I was just, I felt so boxed in. And so, um, you know, trying to find that balance, I guess, has been really tough for me. And when I do have, you know, dark days, it seems to be related to my work Mm. and feeling like I'm either not where I should be, or maybe feeling like I'm doing too much for too little or Mm -hmm. uh, not being creative enough. You know, a, a lot of these well, these gigs are creative and some of them are just, we just need this on camera. Right. You know? Right. And, um, so that, that's been the toughest part. And generally speaking, um, I'm able to kind of 
push my way through those times, you know, as things come around and it's hard for me to, to have a day off and to say, I'm just going to watch four seasons of whatever on right. Netflix, you know, um, because in the back of my head, I'm, you know, is there a little, little guy back there saying, Hey, you got, you got to find some work. You got to, you got to, you know, bills to pay. Mm-hmm. Um, the other kind of th- thing I think that I have a problem with is, is not uncommon, you know, but it is the entrepreneurial spirit that I've had really, um, you know, when, when I, I opened up my own business, you know, back in 2005, um, me and Matt, Ma- Matt Lawhorn started uh, sector seven G mm-hmm. all ages music venue. And that was really great because you're building a business and you're building a thing and, and you're, you know, uh, you know, you're getting those results and seeing it grow into its own thing. And, and that's really great. Um, and that, that's what really, you know, makes me the most fulfilled. I think when I get to a certain point though, you know, I, I'm either trying to push it in a different direction or maybe it's gotten, you know, um, I've reached some sort of limit that right. can be tough for me. Right. And even now, like when I'm so busy all the time, as people both correctly and incorrectly think that I am, because mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. it just depends on the week. Right. But um, I, I'm in the back of my head. I'm like, man, I, here's another business idea. Here's something else that I could do. Or here's something else like, you know, maybe, uh, you know, I'm not really interested, but like maybe I'll start my own podcast, you mm-hmm. know, <laughs> you know, or like maybe I need to be a YouTuber, you know, right. Um and it's, it's just these things that, uh, you know, I, I feel like that's always going to be there. But yeah. the problem with that is that even when you get to a certain level, mm-hmm. um, you, that drive is still there. Yeah. You know, always, so have, always having something new, always working on something else or whatever. Yeah. 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 And there's always, you know, there's, there's always that piece of gear that I need to save up for. Yeah. You know, and that's exciting. But at the same time, like once you get it, there's just something else mm-hmm. that I, you know, I need or want, you know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I think that filmmaking can be great in the, in the sense that you really get to express yourself and you get to help others express their vision. Um, but it is, it is mentally draining sometimes. And right. so, yeah, it, it can be tough. It can be tough. But, uh, you know, like I said, my wife is, I think she's really gotten accustomed to me and my ways. And, mm-hmm. you know, we've been married 13 years. Um, so she she kind of knows, uh, <laughs> you know, how to help me um, to be the best me I can be. And, and, you know, I really appreciate having her there. Um, and, you know, just knowing that, uh, that there's always going to be something around the corner that is going to, you know, inspire me and, and, yeah. and that hopefully will, um, uh, help to, you know, further my career and make me a better person. Yeah. You know, and when you had said earlier, you know, in, uh, speaking what you want out, mm-hmm. I think that's, uh, that's very encouraging for, for yourself to be able to speak that with confidence and say, this is what I want. Uh, you know, they say thoughts become things. So mm-hmm. if you have dark thoughts, you're going to, they're going to create dark situations. So being able to have that mindset of hope and belief in yourself that you are moving yourself towards these things that you want. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, that's amazing uh, to be able to have that as a tool um, to be able to, again, basically you're continuing to encourage yourself uh, in what you've, you know, what you're wanting for yourself, for your, for your family, you know, um, and, and to not stay stagnant. And it's not that you're not uh, content. You know, I think there's a big uh, difference between uh, thinking and, you know, always wanting to work on something and not being content Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think sometimes there's some gray area where people think it's like, well, why can't you just be happy with what you have? And it's like, I'm, I am happy with what I have, but I have this idea and I want to try something more yeah. uh, you know, to, for every day to try and 
be better version of yourself than you were yesterday. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. Yeah. I think that's just, you know, one of the, the best things we can be in that, like you said, having somebody by your side that you can talk to that is, or, and not even at that point now, you're saying you don't even have to talk to her necessarily. She sees, she can tell when you need that, that space or that, that hug or that word of affirmation or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's the tough part. I think about, you know, depression, anxiety, and things like that is that, uh, first off, it's, it's really hard to kind of, for me to even admit, I think listening to your podcast has really made me think about my own, you know, mental health, you know, uh, and because I, I've always been pretty balanced, I guess I would say. Um, but I just have to accept that like, Hey, some, sometimes I'm not, and I think that's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I've been kind of thinking about it and I've been thinking about, you know, Hey, if I were ever on that podcast, how would I answer that question? <laughs> and now I guess you all know, yeah. um, because it, it is, it's a tough thing. And, uh, and, but I, for me, you know, it's, it's just, uh, it's just about having something, um, around the corner or something in my back pocket that I'm always kind of, uh, you know, like when you remember like fidget spinners, mm-hmm. I think that's how I have to be like, okay, maybe I don't have a feature film coming up, but here's this short film, you know, that I'm directed now I'm editing. And so like, I've got that, that I can fidget with, mm-hmm. you know, until something else comes along and, uh, and that kind of helps to keep me, you know, busy, but then, uh, but also knowing, you know, I just need to go out and do yard work today. I'm not fooling. With, I'm not, I don't want to touch Premiere Pro. I don't mm-hmm. even want to look at it. I think those days are important too. <laughs> All right, Nick, it is time now for the third segment of the show. It's everybody's favorite. It's time now for the Fast Five. Fast Five. It's the Fast Five. Fast Five. Sorry, I don't have a theme song yet. Mm-hmm. You know what? What instrument do you play? <laughs> I play I play bass. Yeah. Play bass. Yeah. Maybe I can get a bass line going on that or something like that. Maybe. You know, we'll, we'll work something out. It's 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 pretty good how it is. You know, <laughs> hearing it live, it's a, it's a different experience. It's a different experience. Live. Yeah, especially when you Should chew on tickets. Yeah. <laughs> chewing at a piece of yeah. whale blubber too. It's That's delicious. Great. Yeah. Mm. So the Fast Five is powered by Poddex. It's an app created for podcasters, but they're great conversation starters. Uh, you know, they have physical decks that you can carry around with you and, you know, just have them as a conversation starter. If you ever have to talk in front of a group, maybe at one of the Southeastern filmmaker things, you could use them as an icebreaker or something. Uh, but if you go to chewinthefatbr.com slash pod decks, use the promo code chew, you can get 10% off your physical decks. But 10%? That's almost 11%. Yeah, almost. Almost about a percent off of that. But uh, you can also a good check, deal. check out the app as well. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to hit the randomizer and uh, we'll get going here with Fast Five. What's the last thing you've done that you are really proud of? Mm. Well, uh, I did, like I mentioned, uh, I got to direct a short film with my buddy Jay Starks and um, I'm pretty proud of that i think just based on uh how it's shaping up in the editing and and you know being able to say uh that i at the end of the day i got what i wanted and i was able to kind of um you know command the performances that i wanted and and, you know Mm. i had good actors so uh, that was that's easy but also being able to to manage a production and manage a crew um, I had a lot of, you know, help. It was a big crew. Uh, mm-hmm. so it was, it was a beautiful endeavor and, um, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that. And, and, and also, uh, on a bigger note, maybe we just, uh, it was a little shameless plug, but I DP'd, a, a, a film called brain gets a life mm-hmm. and people know me as a sound guy. So they say, well, why are you behind the camera? But, um, uh, you know, Hey, I dabble. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I was the cinematographer on a, on a feature film called uh, Brain Gets a Life. It is out on YouTube right now. You can right. just look for it and watch it. It's like 
70 minutes Mm -hmm. and it's totally worth your time shot on a super shoestring budget. But that's something that I can say that we basically shot that on everything that is in my office right now. Uh, So you can shoot a feature film uh, without a huge budget and uh, without a huge crew and you can do it and it can be done and I can show you the proof. Yeah, and it's it's won some awards at some film festivals and things it has. like that. It's done it's done quite well. It's a it's kind of an eighties uh, you know, comedy, feel good kind of vibe. Um Cameron Logan was the director, writer director, and um I think it's it's definitely uh, it's cute, it's charming. You mm-hmm. should definitely check it out. Cool. I'll I'll put the link in the uh, show notes for sure to make sure we uh, folks can check out Brain Gets a Life. All right. Question number two. Who inspires you most and what qualities do they possess? Hmm. Well, since we've been talking about uh, film, maybe that's just on the brain, but uh, you know, I, I listened recently to a, uh, there's a, another podcast about filmmaking and uh, I listened to an interview with two camera operators on West side story. This Steven Spielberg's yeah, film. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I've heard a lot about Spielberg. I've seen most of his movies, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Jurassic park right. like hit me at the exact right moment when it needed to, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but so I, I think I have to say Steven Spielberg based on what they've said about how he's really, he knows exactly what he wants. He talks directly to his camera operators and he's, it's in his head and he's conveying it to all these people to make it happen exactly how he wants it. And I really admire that, uh, you know, because that, that's one of the biggest um, things that surprised me on these, you know, big, big feature films is, and it's kind of uh, that old cliche of, well, it's not really, that, uh, but it's the, the saying that there's two positions on a film set that you don't need any experience. You know, you could be the PA and go get coffee or you can direct mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, and it's that's so true because uh, a lot of it comes down to the, you know, the people around you um, being able to do their jobs really well. But mm-hmm. what really inspires me is is the Steven Spielbergs and the Kubricks and, and those people that like they know exactly what they want and they know how to get it. And even if you know, even if you don't, they'll they they know how to do it. Uh, so that really inspires me. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, number three. Ooh, how many streaming services are you currently subscribed to? Mm. And how many do you bum off other people? <laughs> well, uh, I definitely bum HBO from somebody, mm-hmm. and I'm very thankful to them. I will not out them. That's fine. That's fine. But, uh, uh, but yeah, when we've, let's see, streaming, uh, for music, I, I use uh, Google okay. Play, which became YouTube Music, and I do enjoy that. Uh, and then, uh, I've got HBO, I've got Netflix, Hulu, Disney plus, Amazon prime. And, um, I had Apple TV for the year after I bought an iPod and mm-hmm. then I let that lapse. And now I'm kind of wishing I had that. I kind of wish I had shutter because I like mm-hmm. horror movies. I like bad horror movies. I think they probably have a few yeah, and some good ones. Um, what else uh, that we actually, I just, we've got a free three month, um, subscription to discovery plus, uh, mm. and I worked on a show last year shot here in Augusta called getaway driver. And so I was able to, to watch the episode that I worked on, which is kind of cool. Very cool. Awesome. <clears throat> so that's about, I, I lost count. It's like a hundred. Yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. Different, different we don't have cable, uh, yeah, but we're going to, you know, but, but we pay the, the difference. Yeah, oh yeah. Sure. yeah. In the number of different, Streaming services, especially when they started to really uh, break down into only their content, when they started to pull stuff yeah. from like Hulu and only in the, oh, now you have to get the Peacock or, oh, you, you have to get the CBS thing or you have to, it's like, yeah, it, I can't, we, I don't want to say bring cable back, but I mean, it was, it's becoming more expensive now than it was for than, sure. Than it was then for sure. All right. Number four. Uh, you're a musician. Mm-hmm. What do you th- what do you think is more important in a song? The music, the melody, or lyrics? Oh, you're asking the wrong person about lyrics because I do not care. Really? One iota about lyrics. Really? 
Pretty much. Pretty much. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's nothing, there's, nothing yeah. wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. For a while, you know, I, I was, I, I used to play in this band called the radar cinema <clears throat> and, um, we actually went instrumental for a while. Mm. Um, just because, uh, you know, we're, we were all kind of that kind of music nerd. Uh, but mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like it's, I, I love, uh, a good lyric, you know, if it, if it finds me in the right way, mm-hmm. but for me, my least favorite type of music is the guy in the coffee house with an acoustic guitar and vocals. Um, I, I gotta have some drums. I gotta have some bass some okay. throw me some, some weird polyrhythms in there. Like give me a solo, give me something to, to, to hang my hat on. I don't want to have to like read your poetry to enjoy the music. With, well, well <laughs> playing a theremin or something like that. Right. right yeah. That's awesome. All right. And number five. Burger or hot dog? Hot dog. Hot dog. Yeah. You know, I think there's more opportunities for flavors in burger, maybe like, Mm -hmm. you know, toppings and things like that. I'm not a big toppings guy on a hot dog. I'm just straight mustard ketchup. Yeah. But there's something about it. There's just nothing better, man. It's just a hot dog. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like, yes, burgers have like these infinite, you know, options and you can put bacon and cheese and this, that. And, yeah. mm-hmm. and granted, yes, you can do that Chicago dog <laughs> and put everything on that thing. But it's 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 not I don't think it's necessarily built for that type of construction, for sure. It's something about a hot dog bun is better. Like it's mm. it's a good type of bread. Uh, back when I, you know, when I was younger, my sister would sometimes just eat the hot dog bun yeah. and and mess up the ratio of, of you know <laughs> hot dogs to hot dog buns and really that was a big uh, upset in the whole household. But I now I kind of understand why she did it. Yeah, you know, yeah, which is good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good with a hot dog too. I think it's that's, and I think that's it's almost borderline <laughs> finger food mm-hmm. because you can eat it with one hand. It's you mm-hmm. know, and you have cocktail weenies, you have those kind of things where it's like just quick, easy, boom, grab. You see people. At parties all the time, you know, you got a grill and they're cooking mm-hmm. hot dogs. People will grab a naked dog, mm-hmm. just just eat a naked dog. But yeah. you don't usually see somebody just grabbing a naked naked burger no, and just no, no. <laughs> chowing on a, a burger patty. Yeah. So, but if you invite me to your cookout, I'm probably having one of both. They, yes, one of each. One yeah, of each. there will be one of each that will be had. But uh, yeah. why not? You know, yeah, I, I, I like it. I like it a lot. All right, Nick. That's it. That's the Fast Five, and that is the show. Thank you so much for being here with me, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This is fun. Get a chance to, to talk with you and get to know you a little better. If folks want to keep up with you and everything that you've got going on, I know we've got your information mm-hmm. on the website at chewingafatbr.com, but uh, do you, are you very active on socials? Yeah. You know, I love Instagram. It's kind of been my jam lately. Uh, the Nick Laws on Instagram. If you see me uh, posting a sound speeds photo that that is my way of trying to be creative on set and trying to take a weird picture and then um that will let you know the days that i've worked sound (laughs) i will say this they are cool i love seeing uh, a sound speeds photo come up because i know you're on set somewhere i'm also usually saying like why am i not on set somewhere but this is me this is my thing that i've got to work through it's not you but yeah uh check out uh the nick at the nick laws uh, yeah. on on Instagram. Yeah, and soundguynick.com has been my new thing um, for, you know, just doing sound. And uh, if you want to check out that, it's got my IMDb and, and all those links. And I post a bunch of photos uh, and kind of a, a recap of the features that I've done and stuff like that. So I've been trying to fill that out a little, out a little bit too. Very cool. Very cool. So you can check out all those links in the show notes, also on the website. Again, thank you, Nick, so much for being here with me today. I yeah, really absolutely. It. And buy Rob a coffee. Yeah, absolutely. If you would like to support this podcast, please buy me a coffee at chewingthefatbr.com. While you're there, there is now a new store on there. We've got some journals and some T-shirts and stuff you can check out if you want to support the podcast. No pressure, but uh, uh, I think they're pretty cool. You should check them out at chewingthefatbr.com. But as always, I look forward to the next time we have a moment to sit a spell and chew the fat. Mm-hmm.